Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Welcome back to the channel. Back in August, I hiked the 100 miles of the South Downs Way from Mount Winchester to Eastbourne. This video is my top 10 tips to help you successfully hike that trail. So tip number one, buy a guidebook and a map. Uh, the reason I say this, and I didn't even carry a guidebook, but I did use Google. The reason I do say this is because the South Downs Way is archaeologically, historically significant and it's really, really important and really, really interesting to know the areas that you're traveling through. Knowing the areas, knowing the history and knowing what you're looking at really does help to bring the trail alive. So I would highly recommend picking up a guidebook of either the South Downs or the South Downs Way and, and reading it either before you go or take it with you. So tip number two is talking about whether you want to carry a map or a map booklet. Now the whole trail is extremely well signposted. You really don't need either, but I never go out without something to show me where I'm at. And I would highly recommend picking up this. This is the Cicerone map booklet, which is full of OS maps that basically just show the trail. It shows you a little bit on either side of where you're going. And if you're actually ever slightly unsure going through some of the towns, uh, this is a very, very invaluable guide. Tip number three, you don't need boots on this trail. Wear something comfortable, wear something that is easy to walk in. I'm a very big fan of trail runners or a very lightweight hiking shoe. In the summer, spring, and even into fall, you really, really don't need Gore-Tex or anything waterproof or heavy duty. Tip number four, know where the water taps are. There are a couple of really great resources, the National Trails website being one of them, and also Bike South Downs or Bike Downs, I'll put the link down below, was also a really great resource to know where they were at. They're very, very well marked um, as you go by them. Sometimes you do have to look for them, but the best thing to do is to research ahead of time, mark them down on your little Cicero map book so that you can actually know where you're looking at and what you're walking by and when you're walking by them. Tip number six, don't underestimate the terrain. Most people think that the southeast of England, or just the south of England in general, is fairly flat. It's not. The South Downs has an awful lot of elevation gain and loss, especially going between the main A roads and the motorways. There are lots of very big climbs and lots of very steep descents. So just bear that in mind when you're thinking that you might be getting into an easy walk. Now having said that, once you're up on top, you're not going, once you're done going up and done coming down, the tops of those chalk downs are actually very level, easy terrain and beautifully maintained trails to follow. Tip number six, plan an itinerary that is around five to eight days. That's what I would recommend. Five days if you're a really experienced backpacker, you can do the 20 miles a day that is required. I would look more at doing seven to eight days if you're a slower person or looking at a slower pace. These, this kind of time scale is actually ideal for, for most people. It could be done in less time if you're really, really speedy. It could be done in more time if you really just want to take your time and enjoy it. All right, tip number seven. Wild camping is possible along the entire route. Not always the easiest thing to do on the eastern half. Once you get past about Chanctonbury, it gets a lot more difficult to find a stealth camping spot, but it is possible to do. If you're really wanting to wild camp this trail, um, it's advisable to do it in the shoulder seasons, April or September, when the evenings are closing in a little bit earlier. Trying to find a wild camp spot at 10 o'clock at night is always going to make you feel exhausted and make your days that much longer. Tip number eight, know where all the pubs are. Um, I say this from a personal perspective, there is nothing I like more than getting to the end of a long day of hot hiking and enjoying an ice cold pint. Um, there are a couple that are right on the trail, but not many, so it is a, it's really nice to know the ones that are really close to the trail, uh, like the one in Botolves and the one in Washington. They're a very, very short detour and definitely worth um, spending some time just making that slight detour. Um, and it's always good to have a nice, really good meal if you're backpacking. Um, of course, if you're staying in towns, you're already going to figure out where the good pubs are because you'll be in town, um, either staying at a B&B or one of the pubs themselves. Tip number nine. Now, this isn't personal to me, although I have spent some time hiking it during the winter months, but I would think this is actually quite a good winter trail. If you are looking to do a long distance trail during the winter months when it's slightly muddier than everywhere else, I would suggest doing this trail. Predominantly because the chances of running into too much mud are not that high. I have done this trail and parts of this trail in winter and have not found it too bad. Um, accommodation might be a problem, but again, while camping along, along the entire route is possible and would generally be easier in the winter months. Having said that, it does get really, really windy on the downs and during winter that can be kind of brutal. I have a couple of pictures and did a couple of hikes where the wind was blowing sideways 
and basically it was quite miserable. I'm glad I was only out for six hours. All right, and my final tip, tip number 10, just have fun on the trail. It is a beautifully scenic route. It is definitely different from any other trail that we have in this country. The nice thing about it is it is varied. You go from everything from the city center of Winchester, which is an ancient, ancient city. It has its roots in prehistoric times. It goes through farmland, goes through woodland, goes to the tops of cliffs, all of which is very, very different. So make sure you take a camera, absorb every bit of it, read as much as you can about it, but in the end, just enjoy it and keep walking. So there are my top 10 tips for hiking the South Downs Way. I hope you found these useful. If you did, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. It'd be great to have you a part of this community and I'm hoping that this will help you go find your adventure story on the South Downs Way.